All right, so let's rewind a couple months ago. <laughs> All right, and there it is. That is the Black Magic 6K. And I really haven't done any videos about it. I've used it to film some videos, but I haven't really done any videos about what I actually have in my current setup. So we're gonna be doing that today. We're gonna be talking all about the Black Magic Pocket Cinema 6K. I'm pointing that way because it's literally right there. You just can't see it because it's off frame. And uh, yeah. episode of what the f stop today we're going to be talking all about the black magic pocket cinema 6k i'm talking about it because it's right there let's pull it over Ugh. all right this is uh this is a pretty big rig it's a lot going on here we're going to talk about each and every little piece that i have for this rig to make it is what it is it's a pretty cool rig i can um of course move it all around uh, different things like that. I got the wireless follow focus. I got a couple things on here. We're gonna talk about. It. I made videos about each individual piece, um, but I want to talk about it all uh, together. So that's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna be giving you the details of my rig with the Black Magic Pocket Cinema 6K. But before we get into that, I want to show you a couple of videos that I've actually taken with the uh, 6K. Um, so yeah, here we go. So like I said, I've done individual videos for everything on this rig, but I did want to go through each and every piece of this rig. So my, my me, I'm not going to be looking at the camera for a little bit. I'm going to be looking at my monitor so I can actually see what you were seeing. Um, so if you can see the um, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K right now is housed on the DJI Ronin S. This is the bigger Ronin S, not the Ronin SC. Um, on the back of it, I have a, a piece that I got from Amazon. I'll leave all the links to all this stuff in the description section below if you want to check these out. Um, but I got this little arm right here. Um, that way, whenever I'm holding the camera, I can actually hold with two hands and I can have a little bit uh, steadier walk or crawl. Or if you want, if you're doing like a flash light kind of setup, uh, you'll have a little bit more control um, over it. Now, the Black Magic Pocket Cinema 6K is a pretty large um, camera. So when I swing this around, you'll actually see I have um, some counterweights somewhere right here. I have some counterweights over here on the side. Um, so I got those counterweights uh, from Amazon uh, as well. And you can see right there, that's the brand of them. I will leave them, uh, like I said, in the links below. But I do have to have these counterweights on there for this thing to balance and not this Ronin S and not beeping me. If there is a better way for the, for me to balance this, please, please, please let me know in the uh, the comment section below. Um, also, I have this on house on a small rig um, cage. So with the small rig cage, I actually purchased a, a top piece, a handle that goes up here on top. So whenever I take this off, I can actually use it handheld uh, with the handle um, on top. Now, um, for storage, I use the, um, this Samsung T, was it T5? Yeah. Uh, Samsung SSD T5. So it's a one terabyte, um, solid state drive. And I do record directly to that, that it, it records, especially when you're shooting in like B roll, um, you know, you're going to have really large files. So it keeps me from like clearing it off so much. Um, so I can actually have those files store it directly to the black magic pocket cinema 6k now if you go to the back of it um you can see it does have this beautiful large 
um, screen. I don't have a screen protector on it. I hadn't really seen a need for a screen protector, of course, until I get like a scratch on it and I'm mad about it. Um, but it does um, have a very large uh, touch screen. You can turn it on. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video. But it does have a really large uh, touch screen. It has some really uh, easy menus. Actually, probably one of the easiest cameras I've ever dealt with in terms of screen and the menu uh, and different things like that. But um, you can go right there and you can see your, your uh, past footage. You can see that's the uh, video that I recorded. And you see how beautiful and crisp and clear the picture is it's really awesome um this this screen is um the of course the drawback is going to be the battery the battery life is not the best um there are times where i'm out shooting and i do have to change my battery i do have multiple batteries so i can change them out pretty quickly um but that's not the best thing especially if you're shooting like a longer video it's not the best thing to have to change out your battery batteries multiple times um as you can kind of see on the menu i don't know if you can see that very well um but the the menu system is very easy um, you can go in here, you can choose um, what you're shooting in, black uh, B-roll, if you're shooting in whatever different type of, all the configurations are all just housed on this menu. It's just touch and go. It's not that bad. Uh, super easy, especially if you are a non-filmmaker like myself. So as you can see right here on the side, it is a wireless uh, follow focus. This is the Nano N, I believe. I've made a couple of videos about this because it's actually a super cool follow focus it's wireless so you don't have to necessarily be attached to the camera itself you can have give this to somebody um, and they can actually do the follow focus for you um, it's actually the nucleus in that's the, the model name of it so I'll put a, a link to the card up here of the video that I did for this actual uh, thing but it actually looks really good it has like a really cool wooden accent um, it goes to the uh, this little piece on the side right here that connects to your lens and you can actually use this as your uh, follow focus so you can pull focus while you are holding uh, the camera itself so especially if you have uh, one person doing focusing one person doing the shooting um, you can use this to um, actually focus in the camera now <clears throat> I normally put it over here on the side just to kind of house it. it doesn't necessarily have to go right there it doesn't have to be connected to it um, but I do put it right there just so I can have it now of course the battery on this thing right here is there right now it does have a um, replacement battery they give you two of these little batteries uh, in here but you do have to charge these batteries especially if you forget to turn it off this battery is going to be dead it's just you know it is what it is it is a rechargeable battery so i can't charge this up i do have one that's charged i'm just not gonna go get it right now um but that's what i use uh for focusing and that's one of the big thing that a lot of people said about the pocket cinema 6k was that it, it has like one shot focus it doesn't have auto focus um so that's a big deal for me because i'm not an actual filmmaker um so i'm not really good uh, at doing manual focus all the time. So especially for me, it's easier for me just to have this right here and I can actually focus in whenever I need to. All right, so the next thing that I have is this, if I can get it to go around that way. All right, so um, I have this small rig adapter right here so I can actually mount my Samsung um, T5 SSD to the top of the uh, cage, and this uh, the they're both both small rigs, so they both just kind of compa they're compatible with with each other. Um, and I use that um, whenever I have the camera on. Obviously, I have the uh, SSD connected to it, and I can 
record directly to the SSD and I don't have to pull it off. I don't have to put it somewhere else. It's right here on the camera. I can pull it off, stick it on my computer and I can edit straight from that SSD um, to Premiere Pro, which is my uh, choice. Now, sometimes I do actually use an external monitor uh, for this because sometimes, th so the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K doesn't have a screen that articulates in any kind of way. So it is flat on the back. So if you're doing shots where you've got, you know, the camera in a, uh, a different, so, you know, if you're shooting like this, you can't really see the screen um, as much as you probably want to have. So what I do is this little arm on the back, I connect my camera here and I can actually have my monitor uh, at the top and I can articulate my monitor in any kind of way. So I made a video about the Field World um, six inch monitor. That's what I actually use, a 4K monitor. I hook it up to here to the, um, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K has just a normal size uh, HDMI uh, port here. So you can just hook it up straight to the HDMI um, output and you hook it straight up to your external monitor and you have some really awesome um, monitor action going on there. Uh, last but not least, so this is kind of something that a lot of people don't even think about, but so whenever you're using a DJI Ronin S, you know, this is a very heavy setup. I don't know how heavy this setup actually is, but it's pretty, pretty heavy. Um, having these little feet on the bottom is really awesome um not only because it gives you like an extra you know i don't know holding spot you know if you're holding something you want to do a like kind of a jib kind of crane pull up or just to have some extra stability um it's really cool just to have that on the bottom and this is the actual one that came with the dji ronin s um i've actually purchased um another one that's a quick release so you can pull it off and you don't have to like unscrew it because this just screws on, but um, so you don't have to unscrew this. Um, but right now, this this works perfect for this. Um, the legs are not floppy at all, so when you pull them out, they just stay there. Um, you can set this down, you can put this on a table, you can put this somewhere, and you don't necessarily have to have it, um, you don't have to like house it, you know, it's, it's fine just like it is. So there's a couple things that the DJI Ronin S does now that it didn't do when I first purchase it so you can actually use the force mobile where you can actually use your cell phone um, to move the camera around so that's actually cool if you want to uh, be hands off especially if you're filming by yourself I film by myself so it's a, it's a lot easier for me to use um, this when I hook it up to the DJI Ronin S um, mobile app I can actually pan and tilt uh, I can do video monitoring I can move the gimbal without me touching the gimbal or me being close to the gimbal, I can actually move it from my cell phone. Um, I'm gonna make a video about that separately, um, just the DJI Ronin SC or the DJI Ronin S and how you can use the mobile app to kind of film by yourself because I do a lot of filming by myself. But overall, I really love this setup. Um, this DJI Ronin S, it works perfectly with this thing. It's a little heavy, um, but like I said, with the counterweights, it works perfectly. I have full range. The counterweight never gets in the way. I know some people say the counterweights look stupid. They do look stupid, but you know, it does work. And like you can see right now, everything works um, just as it's supposed to do. And I don't have any type of beeping or anything like that. So if this thing was overloaded, let me tell you right now, it will beep. <laughs> let me assure you. All right, that is gonna be it for today, guys. If you like these types of videos, please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Also hit that bell icon so you can get notifications whenever I release new videos. I will see you guys on the next video. See you guys, peace.